Welcome to the wedding of Tom McLean and Casey Cotomy. To quote an esteemed local poet by the name of Hilary Duff, <laughs> this is what dreams, dreams, dreams are made of. Thank you. The part that I acknowledge Casey for as my daughter is having strong women in our lives and having a strong women in the world. Because when men are in charge of everything, we have really screwed up. Honor that quality in you, the extent to which you embody the uh, power, the risk, the attention to detail, the ability to execute that you embody. When someone is your little sister, and if you have younger siblings, you know this, they're always your little sister, your little brother, your person. And to me, Casey will always be that. She'll always be four, like maybe six, occasionally nine. At the very ceiling, she's 11. But that is the top. Casey was the consummate playmate. And by playmate, I mean plaything. If we played school, she was the student. If we played hot lava, she wasn't allowed to actually jump and avoid the hot lava. We had to carry her. <laughs> Occasionally, we dragged her around on this contraption we made with jump ropes and told her to just sit down. There's hot lava. From the moment she arrived, she exuded an abiding loyalty and a love for all of us. Like she'd known us, mom, dad, Chris, me from before and just wanted us to come more fully into this life. Our wins were her wins, our losses were hers. She rooted for Christine. Some other things about Case from the moment she was born, Christine really, really loved her. Even though when she came out of, of our mother's stomach when she was born, Christine said, put her back or I'll throw up on her. You don't remember that part. The two of them were kind of a duo, and I want to say that here. They made movies. I would hear them downstairs giggling all the time. And when Casey and I would make a wish in a tunnel, in a fountain, we would both wish for one thing, which was for mom, dad, Christine, Casey, Carmel, our family dog. All of us to live happy, healthy forever. Open your eyes. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Ah. Okay. Do you like it? I love it. It's great. Lovely. There is one thing I always wished for in addition to that for Casey, and that is a person who rooted for her like we rooted for her. A person who loved her like we did and like she loved us. Tom. When Casey first told us about Tom, she was certain in a way I'd never felt from her before. I'm not kidding. It was like from the first date, she knew. And we kind of knew too, because from the very first meeting, Tom showed real interest in our cat. <laughs> from the moment Tom entered our lives, he was a part of our family. Tom was just in. When we went to Hawaii, for instance, Tom didn't try to make us go to the beach or do stuff. <laughs> he excelled at what we do best as a family, which is sit in the lagoon all day for hours on end, emerging only at nighttime like little island vampires to raid the nut and cheese platter at the members only bar. <laughs> Tom. Tom, man, I'll never forget those wild times at the Hyatt Grand Club. When you took home those brownie bites and the soft cheese. I won't say more. That's my joke about like what dudes say at these things. You were open-minded. You were without judgment in a way that Casey is. You accepted our family. And occasionally you'd look around and have such awe toward her and I noticed and I remember going yep he's it Tom life is certainly a roller coaster and you've taken risks moving to LA starting a new career 
Seriously, you've landed in such an incredible place in your life and I like to take all the credit, but there's no doubt it's 100% due to this beautiful bride sitting right next to you. You two have a beautiful relationship and I can't wait to see it evolve as husband and wife. I know we all are and I'm especially excited for you both in your future. Casey, you are kind, loving, compassionate, full of energy, and most importantly, you just make Tom happy in a way I never could. Around now? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Oh. Oh, sweetie. Oh, thank you. I love you. Oh, baby. 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 Oh, you don't have to cry. I love you. I love you so much. You look so beautiful. Do you like it? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it was the first week of 2021, and it was a time of great unknowns. A global pandemic was running amok, keeping us isolated from our loved ones with no end in sight. And of course, in our nation's capital, an insurrection was brewing. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, unbeknownst to Tom and Casey, they were each about to meet the love of their life. was in Florida visiting family and friends when he first laid eyes on Casey's profile. He felt something right away and made the conscious decision to wait to get back to LA before swiping right because he knew once they started talking, he wanted to be as close to her as possible. Casey had just gotten back on the dating apps. She was swiping through when she stopped suddenly on Tom's face. To quote Case, Tom's face, like Fabio's, will make you believe in miracles. Casey swiped right and the chatting began. Tom and Casey texted until 2 a.m. on their first night of communicating, talking about everything, their childhoods, dogs, acting, cooking, and yes, the then ongoing Capitol riots. I like to think of theirs as a war-torn romance. <laughs> Within a week of knowing Tom, Casey was telling Ben she'd met her husband. Not long after that, Tom was having a beer with Gavin, telling him he'd gone on his last first date. Tom. I want to take us back to January 2021. It's two weeks into dating, and we're sitting next to each other on my white sofa, animatedly discussing which Marvel movie to binge watch next. I look into your eyes because I need to make sure that the sensation I'm feeling is yours too. How close I felt having only known you a couple of weeks. Tom, I said, this is crazy for you too, right? You looked into my eyes and nodded. Yes, this is wild for me too. You told me, I feel like I'm just constantly waiting for a shoe to drop. Four months later, June of 2021, I'm sitting next to you on the airplane on our way home from our first trip together to Iowa. And on the notes app of my cell phone, I drafted the start to these wedding vows. I wrote that now, five months into dating, and I was still waiting for the shoe to drop. Tom, today is March 16th, 2024, 1,120 days since we met, 
And as I stand in front of you, in front of all of our closest friends and family and loved ones, ready to commit to you for the rest of my life, I am pleased to report that I am still waiting for the shoe to drop. Waiting for somebody to tell me that you and us are not real for pre-Tom Casey to be intercepted and woken from her dream. Looking back at the first few months of us dating, in some ways it makes sense to me we met in the midst of a global pandemic. COVID was a time that epitomized uncertainty, the unknown, sickness, and loss. All of the things in life that I fear. And together, with the help of delicious food and movies and our little man Fabio, we made our own cozy little world. Since we couldn't go out, we set up that movie projector upstairs in my apartment, filled the space with blankets. We binged movies, we rehearsed scripts, we cooked every meal, we took our little family walks, discussed politics, hopes, and dreams. Those first few weeks, I felt so drenched in light and content, like two kids that had built a fort, playing with nothing, no toys, just the light of each other's presence. In a time where the outside world was filled with uncertainty, we created our own little world filled instead with peace. To me, that is the beauty of our love. Casey, I've always wanted that moment in my life where you find someone who completes you and who makes you feel whole. That same kind of love when Jim met Pam on the office and he knew he had met his wife. Right before we had met, I was really questioning if that moment was ever going to happen. But from the time we met, everything just made sense. I can honestly say, from the moment we started talking, I knew that I wasn't just dating some woman, I was dating my wife. Asking you to spend the rest of your life with me was the easiest decision that I have ever made. When Casey was a bit younger and the Cotomies went on a tumultuous, rain-soaked bike trip to Ireland, Casey was given the nickname Shmish by her sister, Christine. Shmish was short for Schmeagol, otherwise known as Gollum from the Lord of the Rings series, because apparently Casey looked like a little Schmeagol with her jacket hood up all soaked in the rain. <laughs> to this day, as I'm sure many of you know, Casey uses Shmish as a, as a term of endearment to refer to her friends and family. So, as each of you place your partner's wedding band, your one ring to rule them all, <laughs> on their finger. I want you to channel that special shmishi energy as you feel all of this love from your friends and family and as you look deeply into the eyes of your precious. Precious. I take this one? Yeah. yeah. Which fan? Oh. <laughs> love you, Shmish. Love you, love you, Shmish. <laughs> <laughs> that was the song there. there you go. Thanks. Perfect. Okay. Good to go. Do you, Casey, take Tom to be your lawfully wedded husband? Do you, Tom, take Casey to be your lawfully wedded wife? To have and to hold in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. To adventure together, grow old together, create together and be partners and best friends from this day forward until death do you part. I do. I do. Tom, Casey, by the power vested in me and with the love and support of your entire community here today, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Tom, you may kiss the bride. things that I regret in our time together. But there's one moment that sticks out in my head is, which is the first time that you said you love me. I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but I didn't say it back. I think I made some dumb response back about not being ready, but in reality, I knew. I loved you from long before that moment too. Being afraid to be vulnerable led me to missing an opportunity to say I love you. I vow to never miss an opportunity to tell you how much I love you and how much you mean to me. I vow to always support your passions and be your biggest cheerleader. I vow to always be your rock 
and be there for you when things get hard. I vow to keep our home full of laughter, songs about Little Bear, cleaning the kitchen, and you. I vow to always give you a kiss before bed and tell you that I love you, even if we have a fight. I vow to be your best cuddle buddy and always be a pillow for your head. And I vow to be a taste tester for any baked goods you make. My lover, I cannot wait to see the li what life has in store for us. I know that I'll be filled with making up songs about mundane things, laughing till we can't breathe, and probably a lot of cookies. There will be so many more trips to go on and a whole world for us to explore together. I am confident our life will have more ups than downs, but I do know there will be downs. Whatever life throws at us, we will take it on together. If Fabio has any indication of the mother you will be, God willing, you will be the most amazing mother. Before I met you, I wanted to stay young forever. Looks wise, maybe that is okay, but... Um, <laughs> Now the thought of growing old with you sounds pretty nice. Something that Casey always does is when I say I love you, Casey responds by saying, I love you more. Well, because you decided to go first in saying our vows, you no longer have the opportunity to respond. <laughs> I get to say, I love you more. And what that means to me is, I will love you with all my heart till the end of my days. I love you more. Tom, today and forever, I promise to devote my life to loving you. I knew when I met you, you would be an incredible partner. And I know now you'll also make an amazing husband. What I like to think of as a once in a lifetime type of husband. The, will it make you feel better if we drive to Target right now? Let's drive to Target right now. I'll drive type of husband. The care for you like you're the only person on the planet type husband, soulmate, person I dreamed of, father, partner, and man. And Tom, just as I know you'll make a once in a lifetime husband, I promise you from today onward to do my very best to be your once in a lifetime wife. A bake you whenever you want, when you ask for it, or even when you don't type of wife. A get to the airport two hours early so you can enjoy one uninterrupted hour of lounge access type of wife. A wife who celebrates you when McLaren does well in F1 or when Iowa football wins, even though she doesn't know what is going on in sports. A wife who proofs your emails, reads your scripts, makes you dinner when you're tired, listens as you recount every single step of your brick workout, encourages as you, celebrates your victories. Tom, I promise to support all your dreams. I promise to be the best possible mother to our future children and to work my hardest to build our home. One where we value our communities, education, good food, adventure, family, and tradition. And most importantly, one where we teach our children the important and impeccable beauty of turning the ordinary into the extraordinary. But most of all, Tom, to wake up every day and no matter what life throws at us, I promise to stand by you, Tom, for the rest of our lives, always loving, forever listening and endlessly waiting for that shoe that it seems is never going to drop. I love you.